Good evening. It's Wednesday, June 5th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Calling the Lakeville Board of Health meeting to order. Is there anyone recording this? I see no one in the audience. Lake Cam is recording this. First on the agenda, 80 Main Street. Meet with Zenith Consulting Engineers to discuss requested local upgrade approvals. Good evening. Uh, for the record, now Zager from Zenith. Uh, so we're before you for the uh, repair of an existing three-bedroom, three-bedroom home. It's on the corner of uh, it's 80 Main Street, but it's also on the corner of Keith Ave. Uh, we have Keith Ave, we have Main Street. Existing three-bedroom homes here. There's an existing detached garage uh, here. Um, Basically, what we're looking to do is uh, abandon or remove the existing system that's there, and we're proposing a new 1,500-gallon um, tank with the micro 0.5 microfast treatment unit, um, and as well as a 1,000-gallon pump chamber. And we are proposing 210 feet. Uh, I'm sorry, 240 feet of Presby pipe. Um, 200, excuse me, 280 feet of Presby pipe. Um, in this configuration here. Um, the microfast unit is being used uh, because of all the wells in the area um, and we don't meet the nitrogen loading per your new requirement of the one bedroom per 10,000. It's only an 11,910 square foot uh, lot. So it doesn't meet it. Um, so that's why we have that system in there. Um, we, the, the system that we're proposing is the, that Presby system. We are not asking for a reduction in that footprint, we're able to fit it um, and make it work. Uh, without that reduction, uh, there's no way of getting around, getting away from the wells anyway. So we felt as though having a little bit bigger system made more sense uh, with the treatment. Um, so the I can go through the, var the the local upgrades if you want. I don't know if you if you have any questions about what I've talked about, or if you want to just go through the uh, upgrades first. Uh, Chris, no, I'm good. I just had a couple of questions on it. Um, where is the old system? I don't see it drawn. Is there anything to fill in, collapse? Um, Do we well, know so I, I actually, the old system is actually right, is, I think it's really close to where the, um, there's a tank here right underneath the tank. And yeah. then there's a, a system underneath where we're at here. So I know there's not a note on there. I'm looking at that now. Okay, so you think we're moving it closer to the neighbor's well at 64 feet? That was my only, we try not to move it closer to people's wells. But, so you do think the old system is under where the new one's going? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay, that's where the pipe's coming out. Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay. Um, that was my only question. Uh, has the well been tested? Do we know on that one? The current well? I'm not aware of it being tested. Um, so I don't know. Um, I didn't. I, I, I have nothing to do with that. So I'll have to okay. find that out. Ed, do you know if there's anything in the record? I don't think we've got anything yet, but they will. They will need to do it. This if is the sale, know. right? This is going to be a sale. I believe. It's not on the market yet, but it's going to be okay. very soon. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to have to test anyway. Yeah. There's no. There's no well testing. There's no reason well testing. I can relay the message to them. Um, I'll be honest, I thought there was a Title V inspection done, so I thought it was done at that time, but I, I guess it wasn't. So um, okay. I will find out from the uh, my client and the realtor. Sometimes they just do the Title V, and if it fails, they don't bother yeah. testing. I understood. Okay. Yeah. It's understood. Just, they, um... Now, do we have a, um, anything on the well in the file on that one? Is that a deep well? I know at one point they had problems with that gas station across the street. Is that where? Yeah. Well, they definitely did, yeah. I think they did all deep wells there. Oh, it is a deep well. Okay. So yeah, it's no, not it's a shallow well. It's not a shallow well, no. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a deep well. Okay. But we don't know about the one up on Keith Ave, if that one is not. That I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The, the one on Keith Ave, that was here before, uh, wasn't it? Across the street was. It wasn't. Okay, that one. It's opposite side yeah, of the I, road. The one across the street, I don't think, but the one further down, there was a shallow well in the area, but it wasn't the one across the street. Um, we have test, uh, testing from 1996. Okay. So it was a drilled well in 96? Uh, no. Um, this is just a water analysis. I think um, because of that leak uh, at, at the place, a lot of them, they, they got water testing paid for, for free, so a lot of people did it. But um, 
uh, like I said, there's no, there's not a Title V with it or anything else. They just did, did the water testing. Okay. Um, we have nothing for, we don't have a well permit saying when it was drilled, how deep it is or anything like that, but we do have water analysis from it. Okay. <coughs> so, Niles, the two inlets, is it what, one laundry? Is that what it is? That's correct. Okay. <coughs> yeah, and there's no real way to do it on the inside. It was easier gotcha. just to do it on the outside. And only one of them have the drop sweep. Correct. The other one's straight in. That's side. correct. Yes. Yeah. So, I don't, there's nothing else you can really do to it. It's D night system. It, they didn't ask for a variance to the water table or anything. You have five feet. Oh, so I was fine with it. I, I'm good. Anyone in the audience speak to this one? Ed, any comments on this one? No. I'll make a motion. We approve the nine local upgrade approvals for 80 Main Street, Lakeville with the uh, condition that we get a well test before the final sign off. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Niles. Appreciate oh, it. We're just gonna jump out for a second. Yeah. All right. Okay, so next on the agenda would be 217 County Street. Um, I'm gonna change that one to last on the agenda. Um, and that's gonna be okay with Zenith Consulting Engineers, Niles, you're okay with that? Yes. Okay, so we'll skip that until last. Uh, we'll go on to number three, 101 County Street. Meet with Farland Court to discuss requested local upgrade approvals. Just walked in, so perfect time. Good evening. For the record, Stevie Cavallo of Farland Court. Um, requesting two local upgrade approvals for the uh, repair of a septic system for a single family dwelling with three bedrooms. Um, the local upgrade approvals are uh, for the use of a sieve analysis in lieu of percolation tests. They did the uh, perk test and groundwater was just too high. Um, and for a one foot reduction in the separation of seasonal high groundwater. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Ed, didn't you have a have. question on the elevation on this one? Um, yeah, so it's not so much a question. So the, the perk um, at the time, it did appear to be less than a two minute perk, but because it was a sieve analysis, we, we, do, we didn't do it. And mm -hmm. it came back as a Lomi sand, which used a 0.66, which is correct. I'm not saying you shouldn't have used it, but um, had we done a perk, you could very possibly get a five foot separation. Mm -hmm. um, and then now you're asking for three. So uh, although you're just asking for one, it's very possible you're asking for a two foot. Because if it's not a two minute perk, it's extremely close to it. So yeah. so just keep that in mind when we're discussing it. You know, that, that it is, it could be close to a two foot. Um, I wasn't out there to do the perk. I didn't do the soil evaluation. Um, Chris Gilbert from our office, uh, he had a conflict with another hearing in Weston today, asked me to attend to tonight's hearing. Um, he's the one who performed the soil evaluation. Um, and I guess it's- But do you think this variance is correct? Do you think we have to change it is my question? No, the, he, he's correct in doing it. I mean, you know, he didn't, there's nothing he did wrong. It's just, um, like I said, if you saw the soil, which we, we both call the gravelly sand and we saw the water pouring in and <coughs> so you could actually see the flow through the sand and it was pouring in mm -hmm. you know and that, that's why we couldn't do the thing um so like i said it, it was a very poor soil so i just want everyone to keep that in mind so you know although it's you know, technically you're asking for a one foot this is very poor soil okay um yeah that was i have a couple of comments on it also um one, you're asking for a wa waiver with the sieve, which, you know, with Ed's, he said it looked like a very sandy soil. Mm -hmm. So it's tough to say if you actually perked it, whether it was going to be yeah. above I the two minutes. Understand that part um, of it. The next one would be on it. I mean, we already have a rubber liner. Um, you already have a pump system. So normally if you, people are trying to eliminate a pump system by a couple of tents they mm -hmm. come in for this waiver but we're already pumping it okay um and then on the elevations of where you called water table uh, i know that you called it at that elevation both test pits 
said those red ox at 26 inches. There mm -hmm. was five tenths difference between those two elevations, but uh, the red ox line was the same in both. But you actually got a 98 contour <coughs> go right through the side of your system. So under those two tests, I'm going to assume that red ox is at 26 inches at elevation 98, which brings that water table up higher from where you called it from 95.4 to actually 95.9. Um, I guess it'd be so it's I'm already questioning Arguments could be made in sandy soil that water tends to stay consistent as far as elevation as opposed to depth um, So I mean that that would be one comment I would make um, Perhaps at, at the 98 contour the the groundwater elevation might be you know closer to the elevation as opposed to the depth that we we found here Right, but if uh, you look at the other two percoles, it moved the exact elevation of okay. the ground to 26 yep. inches, even though this was five mm -hmm. tenths lower, it moved 26 inches. Understood. That's, so um, I'm just assuming that to go for a variance, like you said, you go into three. Yep. And uh, I can pass over to the you other members, but like you're, you're, you're talking, you know, I did some of the math, you're talking 36 yards of sand. Yep. To, add, to go back up to four feet, where questionably you're already at. 3.6 you're not at four if right. that water table is at 98 elevation okay of 26 so i, I just um what was you just trying to keep the mound a little lower What's that the that that was the homeowner's intent yep um try to reduce the effect of mounting and we also have five wells one at 110 120 140 mm -hmm. 160 from the system yeah i know you were over the 100 mm -hmm. but um especially yep. in a sandy soil where we're debating whether it's two minutes or not, seeing who's done on okay. a sieve. So, I mean, um, if, if we were to revise this to have a four foot separation, would we still have to come before the board for that local upgrade approval? No. Okay, so it would just be for the, the use of the, the sieve. If, if it's the board's preference to have four feet of separation, it's a revision mm -hmm. we're willing to, to live with for sure. Again, I'm going to pass it over to the I other I think based members. on that, I'd like to see that. Okay. I think we should just vote on to, to let them use the sieve and then um, and then just no, have that raise a little well. bit. Yeah. I mean, I just see where you... Uh, no, that's the completely understandable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in agreement for the same reason. Like, there's no extenuating circumstances, no need to... We're already pumping. There's right. already, yeah. Understood. Um, and then also, I, I know everything is okay with them, but those chambers with 0.33 from invert to bottom I'm, I'm not a fan of i mm -hmm. i can't say no to them because it's approved chamber but i i don't like them okay uh, i you're only you know shorten the life of the system and by the time you drive over and you backfill them and push them into the ground another inch mm -hmm. you're talking you only have two or three inches between the inlet and the bottom of the sand but okay is, is there just a, to comment I, I, yeah. is there a champ just for f more more for future um systems is there a preference of the board as far as the type of chambers or type of system i don't think we're supposed to give a preference or anything okay. no, i didn't know if you so preferred I just you know, don't 12 like inch high rows. chambers the standard yeah. chambers where you have seven inches to invert okay i mean that's doubling that three and a half you have on that so mm -hmm. it's twice the system yep it, it's just the longevity of the system right um, it's just an opinion. I have, added, have any comment on those? I mean, I know I've run into several failures as an installer. Okay. I put them in, but they, they didn't last. Yeah. Well, like you said, they are allowed, and, and you know, unfortunately, they have the same loading rate as the, the same the higher ones, which is kind of odd because, like I said, they both have the four point seven three. Um, but yeah, they, they they do have a higher value <coughs> rate, and then. Um, <coughs> And also, I mean, they, they do, Infiltrator does re recommend 36 chambers, and, and I think we have 28 for new construction, you know. So, you, it, it, again, it's, this is a repair, it's allowed. Okay. But like I said, it, it's the reason they recommend 36 chambers is because when they get a little too small, they do have a high failure rate. So the combination of, one, they're a low-profile chamber, which has a high failure rate, and two, you're, you're just doing the bare minimum, that also will give it a okay. higher failure rate. But again, that's just a comment. I yeah, it's, it's not completely uh, um, um, appropriate that it's, you know, we, we can't say no to it. Mm -hmm. you know, like Anybody said. watching, he's not doing anything wrong. It's just no. stuff yeah. that we've noticed over the years. 
So <laughs> we don't. I don't like. I don't like when people get beat up on camera if they didn't do nothing wrong. So no, it's, it's all no. Oh, and we're, and we're seeing the trend of more yeah. people doing pipe and stone again. And actually, I think we even saw concrete chambers at one point yeah. recently too, right? Yeah. Flow yeah. diffusers yeah. again. Yeah. You haven't seen in a while. Uh, so is anyone here to talk on this one? No, but I mean everything. Like I said, it's just. Yeah, there's understood. nothing. Oh, we'll, we'll it, definitely it, it take that into consideration. It meets code, it meets five, everything on right. it. It's just the variance to the water table. I just, I, I think with those two. Oh, that's, that's right, a so, valid concern. So I'll make a motion we approve the use of a civ analysis on 101 County Road, County Street. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah, so just to redesign the plan yeah. going four feet and you don't need to come back or anything. Great. Thank you. Oh, we will need a new plan. Yeah, absolutely. Just showing through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, Carney Disposal LLC slash C, Carney Environmental. It's a new trash hauler. Uh, Ed, are we all set with approving? The new trash hauler? Yep, they have everything they, they need. Okay, is anyone here to talk on this one? Any comments? Chris? I'll make a motion we approve County Disposal LLC as a trash hauler on the town of Lake Bill. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next on the agenda, ground coffee cart. 61 Merrill's Wharf in Bedford, Mass. Uh, new mobile food. Um, I believe it's a... Is this a one day permit, Ed, or is this a? No, it, it, this is a mobile one. They um, they actually, they originally wanted a one day, and then we kind of <coughs> explained to them, like, look, you might as well just go for the, um, um, just the mobile one, because they plan to do probably about one once a month in Lakeville. So they'll probably do four or five um, this summer. Um, so there, there will be more than one, but it's not like an everyday thing. Okay, and then we need to approve them to a uh, mobile food permit and a milk and cream permit. You have to approve two permits. I'm good with it. And you have to inspect that even though they're licensed in their own town? Yeah, they are licensed and, and they have several as less, but we still have to do the inspection if they're going to be okay. serving here. And this would just be one yearly inspection on the mobile? Yep, one year. Once because it'd be a permit. Yeah. I'm good with it. I'm good. I'll make a motion. We approve ground coffee cot for a mobile food permit and a milk and cream permit pending the inspection. Is it ground floor coffee cut? Ground coffee cut, it says on the paper. Yeah, it's, it's actually and the ground permit floor. is a ground, so I'm saying ground floor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a typo on the oh. thing, but So what's it supposed to be? Ground floor. Ground floor coffee cut. Mm -hmm. yep. I'll amend it to ground floor coffee cut. I was just yeah. reading off what they no, gave us. I hear you. I second. Any discussion? That one, Bob. That's all <laughs> in favor? <laughs> all right. Aye. Aye. Why didn't I didn't know the real name of it, so I didn't catch it. Reappointments of assistant board of health agents for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. All three of us will have to get reappointed by each other. And if we cannot mess it up. I'll make a motion that we appoint Derek Maxim to be an assistant board of health agent from July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 25. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hi. I'm stained. Derek is stained. I'll make a motion we appoint Chris Spratt, an assistant board of health agent, for the period of July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris is stained. I'll make a motion we appoint Robert Pellucci, assistant board of health agent, for the period of July 1st to 2024, June 30th, 2025. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstained. Okay, correct. Thanks. So. Next on the agenda, recommend, we did that one, uh, B, announcements. Nope. No. You gotta do, uh, Ed is the milk Ed, inspector. Recommend to the Board of Selectmen to appoint Edward Cullen as the inspector of milk for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. I'll make a motion. We recommend to the Board of Selectmen to appoint Ed Cullen as the inspector of milk for the period of July 1, 24 through June 30, 25. Second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
right now. Uh, I'm That's it. We don't go. You don't go to wait. Have them hold, wait for the announcements. You can make announcements. Okay. Me. And any pending items with the board before Bob leaves? No, I can. I can do it. Uh, there was one other pending item we had um, on the mobile carts uh, for the one-day permits. Um, they all now have to come to the board, and we've been getting calls, and they want them for Saturday, and they call on Wednesday, and we don't have a meeting. Um, so if it brought it up to me, maybe on the next agenda. If it's, yeah, we can vote on it. Uh, vote on it if you want to have Ed be able to approve all one-day permits without having to come to the board. Yeah, I'd be um, fine with that. He doesn't have the authority now without his. Right. right. So we'll put that on the next agenda. Okay. Okay. Okay, and, and I'm going to leave not to return the 217 County Street because it's the Eagles and I'm a member there. So I need to recuse myself. And I will not be coming back for a discussion. Okay. Right, good night, everyone. Thanks, Paul. Right, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go back to number two on the agenda, 217 County Street. We with Zenith Consulting Engineers to discuss existing septic system. For the record, uh, Niall Zenith, uh, Niall Zager from Zenith Consulting Engineers. And um, Nick Veloso, member of the Lake Valley Eagles. Um, so thank you for hearing us. Um, so this is, again, there's no plan in front of you at this time. Um, this is more just for discussionary purposes um, so we can decide how to move forward uh, with the project. Um, they have an application in front of the uh, zoning board. Actually, was that already approved? It's approved in 21 days. We just picked it up. Okay. So it has been approved. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so as part of that proposal, there was um, the construction of a deck off of the existing uh, club, which obviously has really nothing to do with you. Um, and then the reconstruction uh, and relocation of relocation and reconstruction of a two existing two bedroom uh, building on the property. Um, and that's why we're here before you. So I wrote a letter as kind of a supplement, uh, just some documentation and informational thing. If you don't mind, I'll just, is it okay if I just read that into the? Yes. Read that into the record? Um, okay. So uh, dear board members, uh, on behalf of our client, Lakeville Eagles Club, Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC, respectfully submits this letter as information to support a request to allow the existing two bedroom house to be tied into the existing leaching field located on site. Currently, the existing house is serviced by a cesspool. The applicant wishes to raise the existing dwelling and construct a replacement two-bedroom dwelling in its place. Uh, it's within a few feet of each other. Um, as part of this construction, a new 1,500-gallon two-compartment H20 monolithic septic tank, along with a 1,000-gallon H20 monolithic pump chamber, will be installed within the limits of the parking lot, um, and a force main will be routed to the existing leaching field uh, for the club. The house would be tied into the existing septic system, le septic system leaching field that is located within the limits of the parking lot for the Lakeville Eagles Club. As part of this proposal, uh, we have analyzed the existing design flow of the system. The current system was designed for a total of 8,000 gallons per day with 155 lounge seats, 128 dining seats, and 60 banquet function hall seats. The leaching field was designed using a loading rate of 1.0 square feet uh, per gallons per day um, using the cut which that was the uh, the old uh, loading rate using the current loading rate of 0 0.74 square feet per gallon per day for a less than five minute per inch perk rate the allowed design flow for the system is actually 5920 in lieu of the 8000 the act moving forward the actual occupancy load allowed for the building is 60 dining bar seats and 92 banquet function hall seats. See attached certificate of inspection from the building department, which I've attached here, and it just calls out that, that occupancy load. Um, sorry, just lost my spot. Uh, which equates to 3,940 gallons per day. The remaining excess design flow for the existing septic system is 1,980 gallons per day. So that's what they have extra. The connection of the residential dwelling requires a design flow of 220 gallons per day, which leaves a remainder of 1,760 gallons per day in design flow to the existing septic system. We would also like to note that the actual water usage provided by the Lakeville Eagles Club is as follows. And we break down 
There was readings taken from January 17th to 2023 to current. Um, I don't want to bore you with all those numbers, but basically um, it says, as you can see, the highest average daily flow rate is 849.6 gallons per day. Some of them are down in the you know 300 gallon per day range, um, you know mid to high three gallon the gallon per day range, um, which is far less than the design flow provided for the system. Also, should this proposal be approved, a detailed site plan will be submitted to the Board of Health detailing the layout of the tank and pump chamber, along with the tie-in of the existing septic system. In conclusion, it is our opinion that the, the system as designed and installed can handle the additional 220 gallons per day generated from the two bedroom dwelling. And we ask that the Board of Health allow the applicant to move forward with this report. So that just kind of breaks down and I'm obviously happy to answer any questions that you have, which I'm sure you have questions. Um, we just wanted to give you at least a little bit of insight um, of what's there and what we had for documentation. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Now, is that currently um, vacant? Nobody is living? That's this? correct. Okay, how long has it been vacant? Do you know? I don't have the exact year. Yeah. No. Years and years? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, how does it get water to that? Is that off the well that is in the Eagles or is that a separate water source? It's from the Eagles. It's from the Eagles. It comes out the side. Yeah. Okay. So it's been capped since that okay. that house has since been abated and emptied. Okay. So these and none of these readings have taken into account the new two hundred twenty gallons per day flow drawing off that well. That's correct. Okay. Um, what is the well in the basement? Is that a gravel packed? I know it's permitted by the state, so we don't have much besides some testing reports and the. Do we it obviously can't be a deep well because it's inside the building. We don't know. Can't answer. Can't answer that one. <clears throat> that one I can't answer. No. Um, if the well was added, uh, then they put a building over the top of it in addition. The well was initially moved because of, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, there was a salt pit across the street from uh, Mass Highway. Yeah. And the well all in that area got contaminated with salt. Okay. So they put the well in and they put an addition over the top. So it could be a, a deep well. It, could be. it seems, it looks to be, but I can't answer it. It's got a steel casing? Yes. Inside the building? No casing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, I, I, of course, I have lots of questions on them. Um, again, the system is from 76, so we don't have anything with models now. Um, the original design was off an assumed elevation of 100 instead of the actual pond elevation. So if you're looking at some of the, the Tidal Fire reports and the grades, they're calling, they're not telling me what pond elevation is because it's an assumed thing back in 76. Um, they call, I think at 9250 is where they called bottom of system, but it doesn't correspond to where the pond is. Um, so there's been no perks on the <coughs> property since then to, to, with the new testing and new Title V. Um, I know they, that's where they call the water table. They went off the 76 plan. Um, so they called it eight, uh, five, seven feet from the system. But again, when you look at your new grades, and this is probably tied into the pond. Are we correct on that? That's right. Yes. So, I mean, you've got a 61 contour going right over the D box of the lower field. I think both fields are the same elevation. <coughs> I couldn't tell. From they appear the to be in point of the design. Um, so, I mean, if you're averaging three feet to the bottom, I mean, you're, you're, you could be down as low as 58 to the bottom of the system blood stage of the pond is 57. So I, I you know, without doing a perk, I, I'm just questioning. I don't even know if you have, because you, you're adding flow, but you're not, you know what I mean? You're adding this cottage to it. Um, and if this isn't up to Title V, current Title V, I don't see how you could add something to a system that's not up to Title V. You're not increasing the flow because you have it, but you're adding to it and you're in a zone A. So if the if the board would like, would a, a current Title V inspection suffice if we had somebody do an analysis to make sure it's functioning properly and ensure the depth of it in relation to the water table? If that were done, would that be something that the board would be okay with? That would be definitely one of my requirements. To, it would be meant bare minimum to start is to make sure the system, because even in some of the pictures back uh, when they changed 
the tank and the D boxes, I mean, there was quite a bit of grease and the, there's pictures in here in the Title V of that tank yeah. not looking so good in either one of them. Um, so that was one question on just, is this system actually four feet above the water table or five if it's less than two per? Um, yeah, I don't think it needs to meet that for an existing system. It no. just needs to be, and I understand that, but it just but, can't be in the water table correct. Uh, for a Title V inspection. Right, I mean, I think I talked to Ed on this. I mean, even if it was one inch above it, it's technically by Title V, but I wouldn't let you add flow to a system that's that close to the water table. I mean, it's just not up to Title V standards being a 1976 system. Okay. Um, the other question and problem, I mean, how this ever got permitted back then of 8,000 gallons a day with a public well 104 feet away with a drawer off of that, it's not up to today's standards. Um, I know you went off the well results of what you're drawing, but that's not what you're permitted for. So anything above 1,000 gallons, you, you have that 100-foot radius. We understand. But even with your new update, you're almost 4,000 gallons. So if you do the radius, this system is inside that drawer of that well, if you're at capacity, not what you're using. But I mean, this is permitted to use that. That's what you're permitted for. Okay. Um, and like I said, you're only 104 feet away. So as soon as you get over 1,000, you got to, you know, formula, you got to go to meet the drawer of the well. And you're adding 220 gallons, so you probably not going to use that, but for this cottage, uh, this house you want to add now, draw off of that well. So that might put you over 1,000 gallons a day which is gonna change the formula for where that well drawer is. Um, yeah, I mean, we took, again, we took the highest one by far. I mean, there yeah, were some a couple that were close and there was a lot that were, I mean, if I took an average, it was probably, right. probably more in like the 700, 6, 700. Right. Again, I'm not disputing what you're saying by, by any means. Um, you know, and on an average 220 gallon a day system, I mean, lucky, you have theoretically to. using half of that. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's I just know you true. Know that. But I get, it's, theor it's theoretical and that's it's what you have to go by. Right. I and, you know, if they have added on to this where you're already permitted, um, again, you're on zone A, so there's hope be another whole issue if it ever was allowed. Yeah, but Understood. Um, but you are permitted for that with that well. And, again, we have no control of the well. It's a public well. It's through DEP. Yep. Um, and then the, the last question um, I would have, I mean, being – just stating what I stated where the well is only 104 feet away. You don't meet nitrogen loading um, for this lot size with that gallon inch a day. I mean, you should really be a D night system for that cottage to even think about tying into this. Um, we're amenable to that for sure. Just because uh, you don't meet nitrogen loading. I know the system can handle it, but it, the property can't handle it. Yeah, no. Even what you're using, it can't handle. Um, no, we're, we're amenable to that for sure. Again, that's why we're here before you to find out what the parameters would be if they're, you know, to even have a chance of moving forward, what what they would be, what we would have to do. Again, this is just a, you know, a summary right. of right. what the proposal was, and then we'll come up with a detailed plan if if, if move forward, right. um, and we'll come up with a plan that shows the night and you know comply with all the standards that you know all the typical requirements that we would right. you know do. And again, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's only two of us, so we're going to have to be unanimous. Seeing Bob refused himself. Um, but it's a pre-existing non-conforming for the cesspool that's been there. So I think one way or another, I, I think you'd be able to put a system in there. I don't think we're going to tell you you can't. Yeah. Um, it's just a question you want to tie into this one is all I'm questioning. Understood. Um, and then if it's not feasible, I don't know if we even have room to get another one out here, that there's no other spot to put it. That's with, the problem. Is with a reserve. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Um, uh, is there a current well test too this, for that well in the basement? I think it has to be due to yeah, state. Yeah, DP requires regular yeah. testing. Yeah, it's okay. public well. They're like, is it, I guess everything's okay. I mean, I've, I've heard some other wells in that area are questionable. Yeah, do you have a treatment system? For yes. Yeah. Okay. So they, they actually tested after the treatment system, so we're really not. The results from DEP don't get the actual what's coming out of the yeah. well. They, they get the treatment system. They, but you have manganese, I, I believe. And I don't know the specifics to it. I know there's a treatment, and they come in monthly, I believe. Um, that was my, and then with the well being in the, I mean, you sh should be able to get 50 feet to the new tanks. 
mean, that's a minimum? Yes. So yeah. that's not a, I don't believe that'll no, be an issue. That's a problem. Um, no, we might have to get deep with the with the, with the pipes at the beginning and then, you know, because of the parking lot kind of the way it goes, but then we'll get the tanks out. So you'd have to ask for a variance go. deep in the three feet over the tank or something? You oh, think? no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just talking about the pipe, uh, you know, the pipe going to the tank because it's yep. going to dive down. That, I, I don't think we'd have to... You don't have to ask for a variance uh, for that, just the component just itself. Components. I don't believe. I don't think you have to ask for for the over no, the pipe. Do you, Ed? No, no, over the pipe, no. I didn't just think the tanks. No. Yeah. So you, to get that cover to work out, we would just have to, yeah. you know, get, the end to get the 50 feet, we would have to push it down further out. So, yeah. That, but I don't, I don't feel as though that would be an issue at all. Okay. Um, and then you plan on leaving all the seats and everything that, through the fire department as is you don't want to change any of that that's that's what i've been told okay um so how would that work i guess back to you ed now because they want to add 220 to a system that's already approved for eight so you can't leave it eight and add 220 are you going to be 220 now and you're going to have to change the wording with a restriction that this is added to that flow because now this the eagles isn't going to have the same flow because now you added 220 to it so that's going to be taken out of the eagles correct so that'll have to be stated in the design yeah because you won't have the same number of seats anymore you can't have the same number of seats and add 220 from a different unit well i think and I, but in the letter you talked about how what what it's approved for like they actually is less what they're actually using less right like we have almost two, almost exactly two that without the 220 we have just under two thousand gallons a day in excess uh uh capacity with the, in the seats system. okay so you'll still be able to keep the seats what you have and we still have an excess they yeah, had the foresight the when they originally designed it to add i mean what about 400 plus yeah, right, it's, and it's, we're talking it's, about it's, it's, it's it's ridiculously oversized, which is good, you know, but like I said, that's why they have so much capacity. And that's why it's still working, because I, I think otherwise it would, you know. Well, it was the rib lodge then, so, you know, you, you never know how many people are going to get showing up for ribs, right? <laughs> the original one? Well, I'm sure, and probably it was probably more, like, they were thinking outdoor stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, match, back right? Then. You know, they was probably had the smokers and all that stuff, and it was all summertime stuff, especially being right on the pond. Yeah. But imagine that's where that, that has to be where that big number comes from. Yeah. It's the only thing that makes sense. Well, they actually have it as three floors, so, like they're showing you, but I think there's only two, There's right? three yeah. floors. So yeah, there's three total floor. floors, the third floor is not used. Yeah, or so maybe that's why right. they were using that third floor. Right. So there's potential for more use and water flow if that third floor went into use. There's no plans in the future to use that third floor. Okay. Um, egress especially. It would be against building by uh, building code. There would have to be a whole other staircase added, which the Eagles has that. no plans to do. Okay. Um, Chris, do you have, I, again, I, I think we have to do something. It's an existing structure. I, it's just a, it's a conundrum, of course, but it, uh, it's, a, it's a unique situation. But um, I tend to agree with what you were talking about too, especially the Title V. Um, there's, rise, are there, there's risers on those D boxes too, right? I believe so. And I, I think, it looks like there's little manholes in your plan. Yeah, they kind of aligns with the original plan. Yeah, so, four, uh, yeah, that the, the, the circles on this plan. So, yeah, that's I'm why assuming I'm, asking, that's, I'm assuming that's. I'm assuming that's what that is. Yeah. So, that, that should be a pretty thorough Title Five where you can actually look at the D boxes too, not just the tanks. And, right. And I think see that, how stuff is operating. Oh, they're definitely going to have to look in the D box, and they're yeah. gonna, they're probably going to camera it. I mean, it's probably most likely what's going to happen. That'd be great, too. You know, because, yeah, those pictures, did you see those yeah, pictures? Yeah, did you <laughs> see? I mean, that's what the grease floating in there looks like. Yeah. I mean, that's, it was in rough shape back 2010. That's um, probably poor maintenance of the grease trap, in my guess. Um, it's funny, I was talking about grease traps today. It's one of the worst things to open. <laughs> that's the deep The Burger King in Easton, I opened it a long time ago. That's when they added the tank and the D box. The other one would be over here towards the street yeah. side. So I'm assuming they put a cover grade. Okay. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing would just be, like you said, a Title V for me and determining a water table. Uh, and if there's no other option to get another one separate from the system, uh, I don't know whether our other 
option would the, be? The canal that's next to the house, right? The, the house on the other side of it? Yes, sir. That repair is fairly new, what, that two or three years? That was sand, like seven feet or so eight feet So you could probably pull that edge. to get some information as far as wide table, I guess, too, maybe. I mean, think to kind of get so an idea well. of comp to be you able could, to compare the two? You could, I'm sure that, that was down at 57. Yeah. That was at Waddle Number. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're higher here, yeah. but I don't think it's yeah. really going to matter. Right. Right. Yeah, it kind of makes sense with I don't little. think there's any perch out there. <laughs> well, you're up to 63, 64 in the parking lot, so it could it could vary from where, because this house you're talking about is over here. Right. It's like and that perk test is only going to be at elevation 56 or 57, so I don't think you'd know the elevation of a perk test at 63. We may it. have to, you know, depending on what the Title V inspector comes up with, we may have to do a soil evaluation out there as far as determining where the water table is and see what the soils are like. We may have to do that. It's going to be the, uh, whatever their comfort level is um, and what they can come up with. There's yeah. probably no records that they're going to be able to utilize to determine it. So unless they use the pond elevation, but that's, you know, I don't know if that would happen. I'll, we'll have to find out. They're, they're going to have to find a, an inspector uh, that they're comfortable with. And then, and then like I said, know. I think if you use and would you use the flood elevation or the, the standard 55, I mean, or would you use? Yeah, yeah I wouldn't use the, I typically wouldn't use a flood use elevation, typically, no. no. I would typically use like, you know, it'd be between that and, and the high water mark in the pond, typically. But that, I believe that area is fairly sandy. Did you, were you involved in the one next door, Ed, the BSF? No, that was before. That was before you, okay. That area transitions from sand in the Freetown side to not so good down the county, uh, down in the Lakeville side. Road. So there's a transition there. I believe we're on the sand, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of saying that, I'm prefacing that with it's, it is, yeah. I mean, there's a transition. The, the old test bits say it's the sand. It, it does, exactly. Yeah. It, it does. It does. Make sense for the neighborhoods going, you know, down county towards Freetown, like that. All those things. I mean, we think we've right. only seen sand through there, all the right. way up to, yeah. up to um, Heaven Heights. Correct. Um, there yeah. are some areas in there that are really bad. So, uh, but again, we found. Uh, that, uh, I agree. The the, the uh, design plan calls for sand. Right. So. And again, the only reason they called water is because they found seepage in test pit five. Understood. In February twenty fifth to seventy six when they did it. So yeah, so there could be high. There definitely could be modeling. There could be models two or three feet higher than that. Yeah, potentially. Okay. It depends. If it's sand, most likely it's not, but it could right. be. But it could, could be. you get a better determination of water table and yeah. a Title V if that's. And like I said, I, I think he, you'd have to go deep night. I don't see really a way to get around. Yeah. Um, no, again, we, we weren't. This wasn't like a definitive. This was just kind of a description. It was, you know, it was more geared towards providing you with the information and then the plan was to come and find, you know, get your input and now we'll, we'll kind of go to the drawing board and yeah. see where we're at and make some decisions. And obviously if they find that everything's working properly, we'll move forward with the design, get that in front of the board. We'll obviously have to come in front of you for some for upgrades, just, just because, um, just, you know, separation to, you know, with the tanks and the unit and all that pond, to the pond yes. and went into the water supply. So it's definitely going to be there's definitely going to be a you know more bite at the apple on this one for sure. So, but yeah, we're we're comfortable with all uh, you know your recommendations for sure, and we, we appreciate it. And uh, again, since I've been on the board, we've never made anybody put a tight tank in. I mean, people have, some people just would rather, but then if there's any way possible to get a system in, uh, I'd rather do that. I'd you know I'd rather do it for. Maybe while we're exploring, if we can figure out a way to get us, I mean, would the board be happy with us? I mean, if if this was last case scenario before a tight tank to do a separate system, if that didn't work, would it be would they be would that be looked upon? I just want to have options. Um, if we were, if we did have room to do a separate system, is that something that the board would be amenable to? Um, in my opinion, I, I think we'd have to. I mean, I don't like you said. We just let that other one go. Well, didn't just let it, but the one right next to you is real close to the water. It's, yeah. it's a bottomless sand, yeah. but it's pre-existing. So, I mean, I don't see how we can, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. like I said, I never have. If you get something in, um, if you find out this one isn't up to where it should be, and I mean, that's just my opinion. I can let Chris, because again, there's only two of us, I'm sure. Bob's no, gonna, I, I mean, himself. I'm in agreement. I mean, look at it as a repair. It's pre-existing repair. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. You have to get something for you. Okay. Any comments on it? I just I get nervous for like, if that ends up like, what's end up going to end up happening with the house? Like, is this like somebody is going to sell it? It's long term it rental. It's going to be a long term rental. I just get nervous, like, with not knowing the exact condition of what's going on, that something goes wrong, and, like, if, it's, if it was sold, you know what I mean? That's the only thing. Uh, it's, it's all like, part of one property. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be very hard to get zoning to split that off, but I, we, I, there's no talk. It's, it's a, so the Eagles is a club nationwide. I don't think the Grand Area would even allow it because they own the property. Okay. A question, I guess, to Ed, if you know this one. It's no problem allowing two septics on one property. You know, there are, it's only one property. We don't have anything in our... Yeah, it's existing. It's over the one on 44. That was similar. We yeah, had three, three septics on that okay. one. Um, you know, ideally it is, you know, if, if you have the opportunity, you can combine them. Um, but like I said, since there is currently two existing systems and only one's in failure, you, you can just fix the one. You know? Okay. So, yeah. like you said, you can discuss your options. And that's why I asked was just to see, you know, I mean, well, what, what's the best the option? Day, I think it's, I mean, if that, the existing system is working great, then like, you're just adding 220. Right, which you already have to flow. Think, it's, it's, well, right. and that, that I think that's mean, better than, than putting, pumping, you know, another system into the ground. Ten like, more variances, the system, I think and that's, that's why we, yeah. that's why we, kind so of, that was the thought process. It's just making sure the other one is, like, everything's up to snuff, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Just because it's just so old. Mm -hmm. I mean, 76 is it's original. Oh, well, not it's probably one before that, but it's it's uh, probably seen quite a bit of use. Yeah. Um, but now I'm fine. And this is just a discussion, so I don't think we need to vote on anything. No. Any other? Uh, anyone want to speak to this one? Or any comments on? All right. So yeah, we uh, again we knew this was just kind of like an informal discussion, just kind of a you know informational discussion. So thank you for your time, um, and we'll uh, we'll obviously we'll be in touch with Ed if we have any questions or anything, and then we'll uh, we'll be back with him the board if uh, we move forward. All right. All right. Thank you very, thank much. You very thank much. much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. You too. Okay. Next on the agenda, we're going to go down to number eight. Uh, it's the announcements. Plymouth County Mosquito Control, and we have a public health advisory uh, for Long Pond, and I'll turn that over to Ed for those two. Yeah, so for Plymouth County, they have started spraying, um, so you can still make the request, all the information is on our website, um, or you can just call um, just uh, Plymouth County Mosquito Control and have it requested. They give you, they give you your if you give them your address, they will come and they will spray you. You get on a list so they don't do it right away, but usually within a couple of weeks, they can get out there and do it. So like I said, we are expecting a bad mosquito season this year. So um, the more properties that are sprayed, the better. Um, that's what I on that. And then uh, on the, we were contacted by the Department of Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Um, what they do is they um, test all the fish and all the bodies of water in Massachusetts, both streams and lakes and ponds. And um, the fish in Long Pond um, tested above the um, limit for PFAS. Uh, PFAS is a, um, it's kind of an emerging um, contaminant that's getting more and more common. Um, and it, it's cancer causing, has problems with diabetes and heart disease as well. Um, and what they're recommending, uh, they're putting out an advisory. So they're saying children under 12 and people who are nursing pregnant or may become pregnant should not eat the fish in Long Pond. Um, for everyone else, um, you can eat, um, they suggest limiting your fish to one meal every two months. So you can have a small amount of it, so basically six fish a year. Um, but for pregnant women and children, they, you really, they're recommending none at all because what PFAS is, is they call it a forever chemical because once it gets in your system, it really never leaves. Uh, so especially for fish, uh, for children and pregnant women, if they start accumulating the PFAS when they're very young and, and in pregnant women, um, you know, the, the fetus is actually getting the, the, the PFAS. By the, by the time of the lifetime, they'll just 
get too much PFAS in their system and probably end up with um, problems overall. So um, that's why it's, it's greater concern for children under 12 and for a pregnant woman or women who could become pregnant. Um, um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Any questions? Yeah, with the new EPA guides on the drinking water, I saw some spots in town. <laughs> yeah, so that's not, um, they are, the EPA do, does have new guidelines that will go into effect. They're given about five years. That's not that guideline. This is, yes, this is broke the threshold of the old guidelines. So, yeah. you know, the new guideline is going to be a lot more stringent is kind of what you're saying, but even, even. Well, it's food versus water too, right? Yeah. And you get PFAS from a lot of ways. Um, a lot of it's on uh, takeout food, uh, takeout food containers and things Pizza like boxes, that. boxes, deli paper. Yeah, and, like, and then, um, but like obviously, you know, um, food, if it's actually in the fish itself, then it's obviously going in you, you know. It's, it's one thing if it's getting off a container, but when you're eating the entire fish, you're getting a lot of PFAS. Um, okay, and there's no restriction or anything on fishing in the pond? No, it's like an advisory, like you see on a uh, smoke okay. uh, cigarette thing, you know, it's like, you know, no pregnant woman should not smoke. Um, they won't get arrested if they smoke or anything like that, but they should not smoke, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's kind of the same thing. It's just, it's warning people, because a lot of people think, hey, this is a great pond, I'll fish there all my life, you know, it's, um, there's, there's no health issues. And, you know, 20 years ago, there wasn't any health issues, but there are now, just because we're, we're using more and more PFAS and more and more PFAS are getting into the ponds. Okay. That's it on the that's it under the announcements. Um, I think we already jumped down to pending items when Bob was here. Mm. There's nothing, I have nothing. Nothing. Um, good. I'm good. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.